So my presentation is on Two Souls of Socialism by Hal Draper. First half, the introduction in chapters one through six. So the biggest crisis for socialists today is the meaning of socialism itself. Many movements and ideas are labeled as socialism, but are contradictory to one another. The most unifying definition of socialism would be anti-capitalism. However, many social Democrat parties are barely even anti-capitalist and believe that social reforms under capitalism are socialism. There are also communist states which have aimed to abolish the private capitalist system by having the state own the means of production as opposed to capitalist pro private property owners. However, the workers there are still exploited, do not have control within that system, and do not own the means of production. Social democracy attempts to reform capitalism into socialism from above. The Stalinist conception of socialism aims to impose socialism from above with state power. There are many types of socialism, but the main divide is between socialism from below and socialism from above. While these forms are very, while the Stalinist form of state communism is different from the reformist approach of social democracy, these are both forms of socialism from above, which is the idea that socialism can be given to the people by rulers who the workers do not have control over. Socialism from below holds that the only way to create a socialist society is for the workers to organize themselves and mobilize together in revolutionary struggle. Emancipation from above is the all-pervading principle through centuries of class society and political oppression, not just socialism. All rulers throughout history have promised this in order to keep people looking upwards as opposed to organizing themselves for liberation. So chapter one is about some old, uh, in ancient socialists, uh, Karl Kautsky lists several people that he believes were ancient socialists, including Lycurgus, Pythagoras, uh, Plato's Republic, and Catiline and the, the Gracchi as early socialists. And he cites uh, Lycurgus as a founder of Spartan communism, but Sparta was not communist and instead had a system of equal distribution of private property. The ruling class was a military regime over enslaved people, and Sparta was closer to fascism than communism. Likewise, Pythagoras founded an elite order which enforced rules, rule over the plebeian democratic movement, and it was eventually overthrown in an uprising. Kautsky believed that they practiced communal consumption, but later found out that it was false. Adeline and the Gracchi were not collectivist in the slightest, but engaged in democratic revolt against the current system. These so-called early socialists were either somewhat collectivist and, and authoritarian, or they were democratic struggles without any collectivist principles. The first, the second chapter is about modern socialism. So both uh, both socialism and modern democracy uh, began after the French Revolution and between between the French Revolution and the revolutions of 1848. The first modern socialist movement was started by Beauf, 
who have advocated for communism and equality. He believed that the people had abandoned revolution, but that they still needed communism, and that therefore uh, they, they should seize power on behalf of the people and establish a temporary educational dictatorship, since the people had no will to do it for themselves. This dictatorship was supposedly going to educate the people and prepare them for democracy. Saint Simon, another political philosopher after the French Revolution, was totally against the revolution, against freedom and equality, and had no interest in appealing to workers from below until the end of his life. He was racist, imperialist, and supported royal dictatorship. Mainly, he wanted to expand industrialization by supporting scientists and businessmen. When the elites did not achieve the modernization he hoped for, St. Simon began to appeal to workers to organize, to petition their bosses and capitalists. However, his, stills, her, however, his goals were still to have power and control from above. The third type of socialists were the utopians. Utopians supported a communal society and believed that it would be supported by the rich and powerful. They rejected the idea of class conflict, viewing it as a waste, and believed that the only way this society could be created was by the people in power giving it. Chapter three, what Marx did. Before Marx, the movement for socialism was entirely separate from the movement from for democracy from below. Marx started out writing and advocating for complete democracy and of freedom, for complete democracy and freedom of speech in Germany, then began to learn about the socialist ideas coming from France. He was the first socialist who came to the concept of socialism through liberal democracy. With Engels, he developed arguments against elitist communism and for democratic communism and wrote the Communist Manifesto. The Communist Manifesto proclaimed that the first objective of the revolution was to win the battle of democracy. Marx developed the idea that the exploited majority has an interest in opposing the system and that the exploited working class can be educated and mobilized into revolution. Uh, chapter four, uh, anarchism. Uh, Pierre Joseph Proudhon, the father of anarchism, is often viewed as a libertarian socialist. Proudhon was incredibly anti Semitic and racist, and he also had very patriotic, patriarchal views on women and did not believe that women had any political rights beyond marriage, motherhood, and domestic labor. Pruden was also opposed to unions and striking, even to the point of supporting police breaking strikes. He was also against elections, democracy, constitutions, and universal uh, suffrage. Anarchism is concerned with the destruction of authority over the individual and not necessarily with the creation of democratic control from below. Uh, chapter five, oh, uh, social democracy. Chapter five, uh, Las LaSalle and state socialism. The German Democratic Party is often believed to have been formed from Marxism. But while Marx had an, an impact on some of their politics, most of them, most of their politics came from Ferdinand LaSalle and the British Fabians. Ferdinand LaSalle was a state socialist, which means he wanted to achieve socialism through the existing state. He told workers that the state could achieve things for the workers that they could not obtain for themselves. This is opposite to Marx's view, which is that the working class must emancipate itself and in doing so abolish the existing state. 
LaSalle organized the German socialist movement into a mass movement from below to achieve socialism from above, with the movement being his personal dictatorship. When negotiating with the Iron Chancellor, he, he claimed that the working class feels an instinctive inclination towards dictatorship. If it can be rightly persuaded that the dictatorship will be exercised in its interests, and that if the crown for its part could ever make up its mind to the certainly very improbable step of striking out a revolutionary line and transforming itself from the monarchy of the privileged orders into a social and revolutionary people's monarchy. Marx personally wrote to LaSalle, calling him a Bonapartist, and wrote that LaSalle's attitude was that of a worker's dictator. LaSalleanism sees socialism as arising from state aid, not from the people. Marx criticized this by saying that cooperative societies are only valuable if they are independent creations of the workers themselves and not from the state or the bourgeoisie. Chapter six, the Fabian model. The Fabians or the Webians are the British version of uh, the book says that they're the uh, British version of the of the Lasallianism. Yeah, the British version. They are the mo form of modern socialism that is most divorced from Marxism. Fabianism is the socialism of Sidney Webb. It is a gradual social democratic reformist movement. The Fabians were middle class in composition and appeal and had no interest in building any type of mass movement. Their notion of socialism was only of state interventions and their theory held that capitalism was being gradually collectivized every day. They believed their job was to speed up this process by permeating the current institutions of society and influencing the current leaders. A Fabian spokesman, Sidney Bell, Sidney Ball, stated that now socialists are scientific rather than popular and said that there was a, dis, a separation between the socialism of the street and the socialism of the chair. They would be the socialism of the chair. The Fabianism tendency petered out into reformism of the Labour Party, but its main leaders, Sidney and Beatrice Webb and Bernard Shaw, became supporters of Stalin's totalitarianism. Shaw had earlier even hoped that Mussolini and Hitler would hand down socialism and was disappointed that they did not abolish capitalism. The Webbs did not support the Russian Revolution itself, but waited until the changes had ended and Stalinist dictatorship had arrived and then decided that it was uh, ideal. Fabianism went from gradual reformism to Stalinism, both sides of socialism from above. The antithesis of the Fabians, the poet and artist William Morris, a Marxist, wrote sweeping attacks on Fabianism. He criticized both reformism and state socialism. William Morris versus Sidney Webb is one way of summing up the difference between socialism from below and socialism from above.